What have your experiences taught you about what makes a product great? Every interaction that I have with an object, I look for two things. I look for uh, the, the way in which you use the product needs to be blatantly evident, right? I, I feel that a product has failed if you, if you have to read the instructions. If you have to read the manual, uh, other than assembly, obviously, if you have to use the manual to, to use a, a product for its core feature, it's failed as a product. And the other thing that I, that I look for uh, in um, product and product interactions are when a product does something in a way that is frustrating or requires more effort than it should, particularly when there's better technology. A good example is a, our, our doors, right? I, it, as a computer geek, it drives me insane that I still have to have a key and like actually turn the key and open the door handle. Like we've had automatic doors and RFID for a decade now. Like why can't I just walk up to the door and it opens? Yeah. Like I want my Star Trek doors. You know, so um, I think it really those are my my day-to-day -day interactions and what shapes product for me are one, um, because of those things, uh, one, I, I try to pare a product down. When you first start and you, and you have an idea for something, you're like, oh man, it'd be cool if I had something that did X. But by the time you actually launch that product, it does like X, Y, Z, one, two, three. And, you, and the first iteration of the product should only launch with just X. It should do X and do it very, very well. And then you layer on features from there. Uh, Apple's amazing at doing this. Uh, you know, The first iPhone launched and I think it had one home screen and like six apps, right? world has changed. But they pared that down to its most minimal core feature set. People still loved it. People still used it. Yeah, there were issues and we've, you know, we've come a long way. When I, when I launch and work on products, launch it with one great feature. Uh, the founder of Instagram has a great quote that all great products started out as a feature. The other thing that, that I do uh, with product and is something, you know, if you go back to kind of the key analogy, I won't put a feature in a product unless it's, per unless it's perfect. So a lot of times people will, will treat features as uh, a checkbox, like, oh yeah, I can upload user photos. But if uploading user photos is a draconian, terrible experience, I'm not going to add it. Like I'm gonna keep working on it and keep working on the UI and keep working on the technology until it gets to a point where, you know, it'll pass the mom test and then it's a feature ready to be added to the product. I think where people get things wrong too often is they treat the feature like a checkbox and, and feel that the product is better because the feature exists even if the feature is poorly implemented. And I think the reverse is true. I think the product is actually worse because people are now being trained to use a crappy feature in a crappy way. And if you even try to fix the feature, they're gonna get angry that you changed the feature. Um, so, so my approach in that situation would just be not have the feature until it's fully baked.